Hello everyone, welcome back to GG and this is part two for this news report today. It's Tuesday, February 5th, 2013. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube it's ddarko2012, ddarko2013, those are my YouTube channels. And I should be able to get the links in there, but like I said, uh, I can't guarantee them anymore at this particular point. Uh, just with the internet and that, it just kind of cuts in and out. Obama passes legislation to lift debt ceiling. So obviously we're going to cover the economy in this and a little bit of eugenics. Obama's passed legislation that suspends the nation's borrowing limit. Of course, this is a solution and a good thing, right? Averting a default and pushing debt talks until later this year. It postpones the $16 trillion limit on federal borrowing until May 18th. And at the same time, urges lawmakers to adopt whatever budget resolution, which is pretty this comes while on May 19th, the debit limit will be raised, allowing the government to have access to approximately $450 billion to avert default. Nearly half of Americans' families live on edge of financial ruin. In the past few years, Americans have learned uh, a thing or two about quickly and how quickly disaster can strike. So it goes on and talks about all this stuff due to economic engineering, weather modification engineering. But a new report... Uh, shows nearly half of U.S. households don't have enough savings to weather emergencies or finance long-term needs like college tuition, health care, and housing. So we've already pretty much covered this before, but uh, just I'll move on. More than 30% don't even have a savings account and another 8% don't bank at all, which I don't think is necessarily a, a, an indicator that they're, that they're in bad shape if they don't bank. As plenty of the middle class have joined the ranks of the working poor, struggling right alongside families, scraping by on food stamps and other forms of public assistance says those that are earning 55 to 90,000 annually have less than 3 months of savings and another quarter of households are considering are considered net worth asset poor meaning that uh, they have few assets and such as savings accounts or durable assets like a home business or car are in, are overwhelmed by debt study shows gasoline at highest price ever for this time of year US drivers are now paying more to fill up their gas tanks than they ever have at this time of year. The national average price of retail gasoline posted its biggest one-day increase in 23 months on Friday, rising four cents to three dollars and forty-six cents a gallon. The average price has risen 13 cents, a four percent increase in the past week. Then they go on there to give the same same BS reasons: refinery issues and speculation about refinery issues and demand. But the key word is speculation. It's all speculation. So. Uh, gasoline and you know people like Goldman Sachs companies not people but companies uh, make a lot of money on speculating in food prices where people are starving so gasoline costs take biggest share of household income in three decades the trip to the gasoline pumps in 2012 2008 took their biggest share of US household income in several decades the energy department's um, statistical arm reported that the average household spent two thousand nine hundred twelve dollars for gasoline in 2012 which makes up almost 4% of pre-tax income, tying 2008 for the highest percentage in roughly 30 years. And U.S. retail gas prices, it's uh, $3.60 for week of February 4th, 2013, the average. Uh, there's a chart going back to July 2011, which we're probably be heading towards uh, in the spring and summer here. But uh, you can go in there, a link will be posted, and it goes all the way back to what, February of uh, 2012, which was at 378, uh, going through March, April, May, around 380, 390, and then it came down a little bit in June of 2012, and it started to go back up in the summer, late summer of 2012, back up to 390, 380 for a while there, August, October 2012, and then uh, the later part of the year, December, uh, these weeks, one, two, three, four, five, basically, you know, six, seven weeks, it was down to 3.30. So I guess that was a, um, I guess that was a Christmas holiday present from our slave masters. So we can divert that money into uh, going shopping at Target and stuff like that. It's kind of the sad part. It's like, you're constantly going to be, we're all constantly going to be supporting this, uh, uh, the system of control, as long as we stay on the grid and all that. But I would imagine it's a, uh, you know, people say, yeah, it's easy to do, and it is easy, but when you're in the situation, like most people are, where they can't pull away from their jobs because they have families to support, it, it's not easy anymore. So it is kind of like being coerced into it. 
um, Argentina freezes supermarket prices to halt soaring inflation. So it says chaos to follow. Up until now, Argentina's descent into hyperinflation uh, with crashing currency loss of outside funding was relatively moderate and controlled. So it's all about to change today in a futile attempt to halt inflation. The government announced uh, a two-month price freeze on supermarket products. What consumers will certainly do is scramble into local stores to take advantage of artificially controlled prices, knowing very well they have two short months to stock up on perishable goods. As photos of empty shells from Buenos Aires start to pop up in a few days, comparable to how threats of a gun and weapon ban by the U.S. government did more for the top and bottom line of U.S. armed dealers than any military conflict ever could. And we have the Hugo Chavez Social Revolution, that's Goldman Sachs, about 15% a year from the 31st of January. It says, Wall Street and Bolshevik Revolution, the remarkable true story of the American capitalist who financed the Russian communist by Anthony Sutton. So it goes on here, says, since taking office in 99, Chavez has spread his socialist revolution in Venezuela by seizing more than 1,000 companies for bondholders that stuck by him. He has also delivered returns that are double the emerging market average. It says the 681% advance, equal to 14% annually, has enriched investors from Oppenheimer funds to Goldman Sachs uh, that counted on Chavez's willingness to siphon the country's oil wealth to pay its creditors in the face of start-stop growth and falling reserves, while his policies drove away enough investors to keep Venezuela's borrowing costs over 12% on average during his tenure or 4 percentage points higher than those of developing nations. He's never missed a bond payment. The Sarah Zervos a debt manager at New York-based Oppenheimer Funds says Chavez hasn't done a lot of good for his country, but he has the objective to, serv uh, to service the bonds. Our interests are aligned. And links should be posted. We'll see, though. But you can go there and check out this article. It's pretty long. Uh, Rise of the Droids. Will robots eventually steal our jobs? I've been covering this for a while now, but uh, robots basically replacing uh, workers now. So we've entered a period in human history when technology is advancing at an exponential rate. In some ways, this has been a great blessing for humanity. It goes on here and it says that uh, many uh, jobs, of course, well, we already know have been outsourced to other countries. But it goes on and says for employers, robots provide a lot of advantages to human workers. They never complain. They never get tired. They never need vacation. They never show up late. They never waste time on Facebook and they don't uh, need any health benefits. And there's a whole lot of rules, regulations, and taxes that you must deal with when you hire a human worker. In the past, robots were exceedingly expensive, but they've become more advanced and less expensive. They ask the question, will there eventually come a point where, in, where the human worker is virtually obsolete? Kosander says, what happens when we get to the point where super intelligent robots are more efficient at everything? Uh, what will be left for human workers to do? It says, and if human workers are no longer needed for most tasks, what will their role in society be? A lot of the jobs that are disappearing, thanks to advances in technology, are high-paying jobs. It says, in fact, one recent study of employment from 20 countries discovered that almost all the jobs disappearing are in industries that pay middle-class wages ranging from 38000 to 68000 So they go on and actually give a, a price, how they cost $22,000 to produce. So, and it says eventually these things will perform tasks even more cheaply than Chinese worker do, workers do. So, it says it won't just be American workers that will be displaced by robots. It will literally be workers all over the planet. In the future, when you call someone for customer service, you probably won't be talking to someone in India. It says instead you'll be talking to a robot. And they already have this. I think it's at, I remember seeing a video. It was at a museum or something like that. That little blue genie lady is actually at the desk. And then, of course, you have uh, holograms at the airports. And you actually have uh, border immigration, uh, U.S. Immigration Customs uh, offices that are unmanned now on the border. A recent Wired article described what this transition might look like. They're talking about what will the world look like as robots begin to replace humans in just about every industry that you can imagine. First, machines will consolidate their gains in already automated industries. After robots finish replacing assembly line workers, they will replace the workers in warehouses. Speedy robots able to lift 150 pounds all day long will retrieve boxes, sort them, and load them onto trucks. Fruit and vegetable picking will be done by robots until no humans pick outside of specialty farms. 
pharmacies will feature a single pill dispensing robot. They actually already have that. Um, they have robots in, for prisoners, I think in Korea, and also they're creating uh, uh, robots to replace nurses. And there's already robots uh, th that are actually giving out medication. So um, it goes on here and it says, next, the more dexterous, uh, dexterous chores of cleaning and offices and schools will be taken over by late night robots. Uh, starting with easy to do floors and windows and eventually getting to the toilets the highway legs of long haul trucking routes will be driven by robots embedded in truck cabs. UK rail fares exceed cost of living. The cost of rail fares on the UK busiest routes have risen three times faster than the cost of living in 20 years. Figures reveal that a journey from London to Manchester will cost 50 pounds and 95 now costs 154 pounds representing a rise of 208 percent. I just learned that taxes uh, in Chicago, property taxes actually went up um, three times the amount. So from like a thousand to a little under fifteen hundred within like a five year period. Then you have d uh, disused garages to be turned into 11 pounds a week pop up homes and bid to solve London's housing crisis. The architects plan for tiny flats on East London housing estate. So they're going to convert disused gar uh, garages into a row of miniature homes. Tenants will have to pay just 11 pounds a week for the mini houses, which are set to cost around 13,000 to convert. Then you have the rise of permanent temp economy. So it goes on here and it says that the uh, one third adults who live in poverty are working, but do not earn enough to support themselves and their families. A quarter of jobs in America pay below the federal poverty line for a family of four, which is 23,000. Not only are many jobs low wage, they're also temporary jobs and insecure. So over the last three years, the temp industry added more jobs in the U.S. than any other. So as low-wage temporary jobs have become so widespread that they threaten to become the norm, but for some reason, this isn't causing a scandal. At least in the business press, we are more likely to hear plaudits for lean and mean companies than angst about changing the nature uh, of work for ordinary Americans. We have student loan bubble forces Yale and Penn uh, State to sue their own students. So Zero Hedges has been talking about the bubble of credit being blown into the economy via student loans. And they also talk about the dramatic rise in delinquencies among these loans. We're talking about these so-called Perkins loans for students with extraordinary financial hardships have seen defaults surging more than 20%. It goes on here and it says, while financially hard up graduates complain of no jobs, the schools are not impressed, saying you could take a job at Subway or wherever to pay the bills. Actually, you can. You can go there and apply, and uh, you'll be overqualified. It seems like basic responsibility to me, but perhaps that is the point. Avoiding responsibility is seemingly rewarded in the new normal. 31st of January, larger student loan debts, less ability to repay. Americans now owe an average of $27,000 in student loans as a delinquency rate has increased by more than 47% since 2005. Then from the 23rd of January, we've been holding on to this article, law school recall, recalls grades because teachers couldn't figure out how to inflate them in time. So it's a pretty interesting scandal, they say. And it goes on here and it says that um, uh, they received their grades over Martin Luther King Day weekend only to have the school recall them because professors had trouble using uh, a grading curve to inflate the grades. In an email, the Dean of Students explained that the school policy allows teachers to use a grading curve to inflate grades, but not all the teachers understood the system. So I guess they're basically trying to improve the university's reputation. Speaking of reputation, a university's German education minister stripped of doctorate. So it says here the education minister was stripped of her doctorate uh, Tuesday after a committee of academics concluded that she plagiarized substantial parts of her 1980 thesis. So I think this is like the second professor out in Germany that's been stripped of her doctorate due to plagiarism. Then Chicago expected to tie the record for lack of snow from January 8th, 319 days without an inch of snow falling. It ties a record set in 1940, although I heard a local broadcast and it said 1890. So I remember I said, watch, they'll start spraying, and they did. February 4th, a month later, Chicago sees biggest snow this season, 2.6 inches. The study says global warming can be slowed by working less. A new analysis suggests that a more European schedule would reduce the effects of climate change. Like I said, as long as they keep spraying aerosols, i.e. chemtrails, no, it's, it's not going to do a damn thing. Former, uh, former CEO of Playboy blames Chicago's murder rate on climate change. Say increased temperatures led to the heightened levels of violence. Schwarzenegger calls for hip and sexy environmentalism or eco-fascism. China's China one-child policy enforcer runs over a baby. 
and a student is suspended after his desktop background had a picture of a gun on it. This is GGN. Thank you.